Rock Hudson was a massive star whose career lasted decades. His homosexuality was a closely guarded secret because it would have ruined his masculine image. It didn't come out until after his health began to deteriorate after suffering from AIDS, but it wasn't his only secret. Mark Griffin recently wrote a biography of the superstar called All That Heaven Allows. It revealed the secrets of his private life that only his closest friends knew. Join Facts First as we learn why Rock Hudson made his final confession from his deathbed. Early Life Roy Harold Scherer Jr. was born in Winnetka, Illinois on November 17, 1925. He worked on his family's farm and was relatively happy until his father abandoned the family when he was seven. His stepfather, Wallace Fitzgerald, was physically abusive. Rock and his mother, Catherine Wood, loved to go to the movies as a form of escape, and it sparked his love of acting. He worked as an usher at a local theater and tried out for plays, but did poorly because he had trouble remembering lines. As an adult, Rock took odd jobs and entered the Navy until moving to L.A. in the 40s. He delivered fruit around the studios, hoping to get noticed. Louis B. Meyer did in 1948 and signed him to notoriously tough agent Henry Wilson. He was the one who gave Rock his famous stage name. The new name came with other changes. He got his teeth capped and took fencing, acting, singing, and dancing lessons for his first film, Fighter Squadron. It took him 38 takes to deliver his one line, but the effort was worth it. He was voted Screen Magazine's most popular actor by the time the 1954 film Magnificent Obsession was released. That sparked a long and fruitful career. Secret Love Child when Rock was 19, he dropped his girlfriend off at her home in Winnetka, Illinois. Her 35-year-old mother, Martha Blair, seduced him. That moment of passion later became one of Rock's biggest secrets and few regrets. She later wrote him a letter saying he had a son named Richard. Rock wanted to meet the child but hesitated to reach out. He eventually overcame his fears and wrote to her, but she never responded. On his deathbed, he admitted, I should have gone back home and looked up my son. Rock's also been linked to a Canadian woman named Susan Dent. She demanded a test of paternity in 2014 and it came back positive. Other claims of a secret love child fathered while he was in the Navy haven't had supporting evidence. Deathbed Conversion Rock Hudson also experienced a life-changing event hours before his death. Former Wheel of Fortune host Susan Stafford says she witnessed his conversion to Christianity. He was recovering at his home in Beverly Hills, nicknamed The Castle. His friends recommended Susan come help because she'd just returned from attending leprosy patients in India and wasn't afraid of AIDS like many other doctors and nurses at the time. Rock was raised Roman Catholic but was an atheist most of his adult life. Susan asked if he wanted to see a priest and accept Jesus, and he said it was, quote, about time. Friar Terence Sweeney, an Emmy-winning producer and ex-Jesuit priest from the Church of the Way in Van Nuys, California, arrived soon after. He led him in the sinner's prayer, a common way to convert. Susan attended Rock's funeral and said his death gave AIDS a face. She returned to her home in Kansas City and told everyone there about him. She emphasized that God wants everyone to love another unconditionally. Before we tell you more about Rock Hudson's secret of life, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Rock's Women Rock was never afraid to give sexual favors to studio executives. He once said he wanted to be a movie star more than just an actor and didn't care what he had to do to get there. He also had several flings. He slept with Marilyn Monroe, Judy Garland, and Joan Crawford, to name a few. These affairs may have helped his manly image, but any rumors of sex with men would have ruined it. To hide his homosexuality, his agent, Henry Wilson, forced him to marry his secretary, Phyllis Gates, in 1955. They divorced three years later. Rock worked to notify everyone he'd come into contact with once he found out he had AIDS. He refused to passionately kiss Linda Evans when they worked together on Dynasty. This caused tension on set at first, but later she appreciated he tried to protect her. Rock also anonymously sent letters to everyone he'd ever slept with. Only one of them ever responded, a man named Tony. He attempted to sue Rock's estate, but the case was dropped. He died a few months later. Rock was more than a beefcake. He had an amazing talent for making friends due to his kind nature and sense of humor. He worked with Elizabeth Taylor on the film Giant in 1956 and The Mirror Cracked in 1980. They became close and she was one of the few to learn his secret. She even went as far as to sneak into the hospital when he was on his deathbed. Dr. Michael Gottlieb put her into his old station wagon and drove to a loading dock where they found their way in. The two were deeply affected by his death, especially because Elizabeth had already lost two gay friends to AIDS. She and Dr. Michael worked together to start the American Foundation for AIDS Research. It has since garnered over $270 million. Rock also had a platonic friendship with frequent co-star Doris Day. 
He called her Eunice Blotter and she called him Ernie. They had a similar sense of humor that helped them get along. Doris feels their chemistry had a lot to do with the success of their films. Rock's health began to deteriorate in the 80s. He struggled to deliver his lines during his 18-episode appearance on the hit show Dynasty. Rock promised to appear on Doris's variety show, Doris Day's Best Friends. He kept his promise in July of 1985, three months before his death. His gaunt appearance let everyone know something was wrong, including Doris. Rock's doctors attempted to explain it away as liver cancer. His true diagnosis was made public a few weeks later, and the world's suspicions about his homosexuality were all but confirmed. The world was shocked, as was Doris. She claimed to have never realized Rock was gay. But that surprise didn't affect their friendship. Doris did everything she could to help Rock, even trying to bring him lunch and feed him when he struggled to eat. Nothing worked, and she was in tears during their last meeting when he took a plane and left. Marriage Rumors Rock wasn't the only Hollywood actor who hid his sexuality to keep his career. Jim Neighbors, who played Gomer Pyle on The Andy Griffith Show, also remained in the closet. Rock met Jim and added another friend to his long list. They remained close until rumors circulated that they were secretly married. The story allegedly began with a group of homosexuals from Huntington Beach. They released joke invitations to an event that were unfortunately taken too seriously. The rumors became so serious they had to end their friendship. The impact of the rumors lasted for some time. Rock's next movie was one of the least successful of his career. Rock Hudson's True Love Most of Rock's affairs became well-known tabloid headlines. He was one of the most famous names of his time, and the world wanted to know about his love life. Still, that mostly applied to his affairs with women, and one of his most passionate liaisons never reached the public eye. Lee Garlington was an extra on set where she met Rock in 1962. He'd heard the rumors about Rock's sexuality and was intrigued. He pretended to read an issue of Variety while keeping his eyes on the star, watching to see how he looked and act. They met officially at Rock's home where they casually shared a beer. They did meet up several times again in secret. Lee often visited Rock's house but kept the car low so no one would notice. They both brought a female date whenever they attended a premiere together. The two became even more cautious after an incident when a female fan broke into Rock's house and almost found pictures of the two together shirtless. They put gates on the house to block out their secret. The couple broke up in 1965. Lee was later shocked by his ex's death. It was an impactful moment, but an even more shocking revelation came later. Rock's biography said that besides his mother, Lee was the only person he'd ever loved. That made him break down and cry because he never knew how important he was. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Rock Hudson? Let us know in the comment section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.